Whether you work for a nonprofit organization like I do, or you're just struggling with time management and staying productive or focused in your business, in your personal life, I'm hoping that some of the strategies that I've picked up over the past couple of years that have really helped me out can help you out too. So don't forget to subscribe because I do weekly videos on living a life of purpose, social impact, nonprofits, leadership, and so much more. Once again, if we haven't yet met, my name is Amber Melanie Smith and I make videos on helping change makers with tips and strategies to help you change the world while living a life of impact and purpose. So it's kind of a sad joke in the nonprofit world that people who work for our nonprofits are spread notoriously thin. We have a lot on our plates. We are working 50, 60, sometimes 70 or more hour weeks, and we are just really overwhelmed a lot of the time. So time management is a crucial skill to not only help us meet the needs of our mission and our cause effectively, but also to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves in the process. About two years ago, I decided that I needed to get myself on track to be more mentally, emotionally, and physically healthy so that I could sustain my mission and the work that I was doing for the cause that I love longer. Like so many others in my field, I had been working 60 plus hour weeks and it was just getting to a point where I was exhausted all the time and not being that effective a manager fundraiser, leader, and other things for my cause. So I spent some time over the past couple years carefully crafting an environment around myself that would help me to be more effective with my time management. And now I'm able to keep those 60 plus hour work weeks down to a bare minimum only when they're absolutely necessary. And I'm a lot better off for it. And so is my cause. Now I work in the nonprofit field, but the strategies that I'm going to share can apply to anyone from any walk of life. Whether you work for a large corporation are running your own business or just want to become a more effective time manager of your personal life. Okay, so let's get right into it. My first strategy is something I started doing about a year ago and that is combating decision fatigue. Yes, that's a real thing. By preparing some things from my day the night before. Usually these are really simple things. I will lay out my clothes, I will prepare my lunch. I'm also thinking about the next day and what tasks I'm going to be planning to prioritize that day. If I prepare all of these things the night before, then the next morning I don't have to think about them and I can just get right into the most important things that I need to do that day without too much worry. If I'm feeling really organized, I might even lay out my whole week's worth of clothes on the Sunday before the week starts by looking at my calendar, seeing what kinds of meetings and activities I have going on that week so I know how to dress appropriately for each day. This is also great for food preparation for lunches. If you are um, that organized, you can certainly prepare your lunches in advance too and just be able to grab and go out the door. My second time management strategy that really, really has been helping me out, especially as of late, is what I alluded to before, and that is choosing my most important task for the next day the night before. Then the next morning, I kind of have a little competition with myself. I challenge myself to see how quickly I can do that very important task first thing in the morning, before checking email, before anything else. Because if I can do that, then I've already had a major victory for the day and I'm feeling pretty good the rest of the day. If you're struggling to think through what your most important task the next day should be, then a great tool that I've used before is the time management matrix developed by Stephen Covey. The time management matrix basically helps you think through all of the possible tasks you could be doing that day and breaks it down into sections based on four criteria. So we're talking about a matrix. So think of it as if on one side you're looking at comparing things that are urgent and on the other side it's things that are important. And your goal is to find the tasks that are both urgent and important. So if you practice drawing this matrix and then you have urgent and important, or urgent and unimportant, or not important but urgent, and you basically break down your tasks and write them in the different quadrants of the matrix, you can start to see which ones you need to be prioritizing, and those are, of course, as I said, the ones that are both 
urgent and important. I'll leave a link to this resource below so you can check it out and practice drawing the matrix for yourself if that's of interest to you. So what are some examples of what some of these tasks might be? Well, for tasks that might be both urgent and important, you might be thinking of a meeting with a top supporter or getting your business's website launched by the deadline that you promised your followers. Tasks that might be maybe not urgent but are still important might be things like personal or professional development or exercise. These things are definitely things that you want to fit into your day and your life, but maybe you don't have to do them in the next five minutes urgently. Examples of tasks that are not important but urgent might be responding to an email from someone who needs an answer very quickly or perhaps an interruption from a coworker. And then for those tasks that fall in the quadrant of both not important and not urgent, so maybe things like checking social media, um, these are the things you want to generally just avoid doing completely if you can. And then, like I said, for me personally, my goal is always to wake up and start on that most important and urgent task first thing in the morning, knock it out, and feel like super accomplished the whole rest of the day. Okay, so another time management strategy that has just been completely life-changing for me was prioritizing my tasks on a calendar. So I personally use Google Calendar. It syncs up really nicely with my phone and my email, but there are a lot of other tools out there in terms of calendars. What I mean by prioritizing is that I'm not only putting everything that I need to do from events and meetings, personal and business, on my calendar, but I'm also prioritizing them. I like to use the tasks function in Google Calendar and make a note of which ones are the most important by numbering them or putting a little asterisk next to the most important tasks so that those tend to float up to the top of my task list on Google Calendar and I know that that's what I need to be focusing on first. The next time management strategy that has been really helpful to me, and of course this one depends a lot on what type of business or field you're in and what your role is, but for me as a nonprofit executive director, I often have a lot of meetings with different types of people all over my region. So something that I've been doing to help be more efficient is by batching those meetings that are in similar geographic areas back to back. This of course helps cut down drive time and makes my day a lot more effective. I like to personally get all of my meetings done at the same chunk of time and then be able to focus on the other tasks that I have to do that day. The next time management strategy that has actually taken me quite a while to work on for myself and I'm still working on it is delegating. Now, being able to delegate in a business setting or in a nonprofit setting in my world uh, obviously depends on having people to delegate to, but with the proper structuring of your tasks and your team and your day, you can get a lot done by delegating tasks that other people are better at, such as video editing or developing a marketing campaign um, while you focus on the things that you are best at. So for me in my life, I might be wanting to clear some things off of my plate and out of my schedule to other people on my team so that I can spend more of my time fundraising, going out and meeting with donors or supporters or sponsors which is something that is more my core competency than perhaps other members of my team. But other members of my team might be excellent at accounting or social media. So I let those people handle those tasks and then we're all using our time the most efficiently and effectively as possible for our cause. Delegating, or in some cases you might call this outsourcing, is also a strategy I hear a lot about when you're running your own business and it can also be helpful for your personal life. If you have the ability to outsource or um, get some help with writing content for your business or um, getting some help with housework even, those things can help you clear up time so you can focus on things that are a bigger priority to you. The final time management strategy that has really helped me out and I believe will really help others out is going ahead and blocking out the time on your schedule and even putting it on your calendar if you have to for things that are outside of your work family time, time with friends, making sure that you are 
curating and blocking out that time from the very get-go, the very beginning of your week, will make sure that you have that on your schedule to look forward to, to make sure that it's part of your life because relationships are really important. They keep you happy and healthy and sane. That's all I've got for now. I'd love to hear from you. What are some of your time management tips and strategies that have worked for you? Leave them in the comments below. And that's whether you work in a social change, social work, social impact field or some other industry we are all in this together we have a lot of advice that we can share across sectors so please leave those comments below and share with the rest of the world i really hope you liked this video don't forget to subscribe and join me every week for new videos on social change social impact nonprofits, leadership service and so much more and again if you're on facebook please come join me in my group, Change the World or Bust. We are having conversations in that group about how we can be a part of making a difference in the world. And I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks again for watching.